Hello guys, I'm back. In this video, I will teach you how to use the rigorous mode on Aspen High Seas to perform Shell and Tube Heat Exchanger calculations. My name is Jefferson Costa and I teach students, graduates and engineers how to work with chemical process engineering and plant design. And as you are here, take this opportunity to subscribe to my channel or to follow my profile because now you have access to hundreds of videos related to chemical process engineering and plant design. To solve this problem, let's deal with two scenarios. The first one scenario is that we have a process, a process feed that's, that must be heated using a heating feed. Both of them are fully specified, as you can see by the blue dark arrow. And I have the condition for my heating out stream, that is the heating feed is heating out, of the 121 Celsius degree. So my limitations here is that to heating up the process heated, I must set or limit the outlet, pre outlet temperature of the heating out. So to add a shell into heat exchanger, it's very easy. You just need to go to the model palette and click on heat exchanger. When you click on time on that, you bring to the flow sheet case, and now I need to do the connections. And for the connections, I must choose what will be in the tube side and what will go to the shell side. Most often, the tube side is the more dangerous or more corrosive fluid or the fluid with uh, the highest pressure. So I will start with the feed going to the tube, process feed to the tube, and the process heated outside of the tube and the shell side is my heated feed and going out is the heat heating out and i am able to verify the process conditions of these streams i just need to go to worksheet and here i can see that my process stream that is going to the tube side it has a pressure operating pressure higher than the heating feed so for now I will let it as it is. Something interesting here on Aspen High Seas is that you, if you don't want to have this tab here uh, free in your screen, you can dock that or you can tab that. So instead of floating, I will add the, I will select tab. So this way, I now I am able to shift from my flow sheet case and now to the heat exchanger in a more easily way. So now I need to set what is the temperature condition for my heating out that has a limitation of 221 Celsius degree. So let's add that to our process simulation. And when I, when I click on enter, the Aspen High Seas will set that to the process simulation. Verify that the Aspen High Seas will give you hints on what you should verify or what you should add first. So it would be much easier that instead of adding the temperature, I could add the delta P in the equipment. So when I return to the design and I go to parameters, now I can add the pressure drop for, from, for each side, the shell side and the tube side. For this example, let's suppose that we have 70 kilopascal of pressure drop in each side. So click on that and type that and click on enter. And I will type that 70 kilopascal and click on enter also. Based on that, the Aspen High Seas already did the calculations for the chain tube heat exchanger and converted. Now, every time that you have a green bar, it means that the, your process simulation converted correctly. But something interesting here to mention is that based on the conditions of the heating media, when I decide that my outlet temperature is 121, it becomes a liquid stream. And you can see that I have a two-phase stream here because my vapor fraction is above or below above one above zero or below one so i have two phase flow here two phase flow here 
and I have in my heating out, I have just one phase that is condensate. And when you are doing the, perf the performing, when you are performing the calculations for the heat shelling tube, you have different options to do the, the calculations. You have the heat exchanger model. So when I, by standard, the Aspen High Seas uses the simple endpoint, and this is best used when we have we when we don't have phase change. So if I I am uh, heating a gas and it be, uh, it continues to be a gas, or if it I am heating up a liquid or a condensate and it continues to be a condensate. So as I don't have phase change. The best option to, to use is the heat exchanger model because this way Aspen High Seas will perform calculations considering that the overall heat transfer coefficient, the U, is constant and also the specific heat of both shell and tube side streams are constant. So based on that, we will have the calculations on Aspen High Seas. But it is not what happens in this way. As you have seen, I have a two phase stream that is condensating. So to have a more accurate results, instead of using the simple end, what I will choose is the simple weighted, because this way the Aspen High Seas will perform calculations based on intervals. And now the heat, the specific heat and the overall heat transfer coefficient will not be constant. So based on that, you can see that as both of them are simplified models, now the Aspen High Seas already performed the calculations. When you go to performance, you can verify what is the heat or the dirty of the heat exchanger in this case. So when you are doing chemical process engineering plan design, you will perform a process data sheet and from that will be, uh, will be developed a specification data sheet and the supplier of the heat uh, in, of the shine tube heat exchanger will return to you the information of the duty of the equipment. But now let's consider that you perform the calculations, you verified what are the duty required for this process, and the personal from operations tells you that exists a shine tube heat exchanger in a facility and you are able, you have the option to transfer that to the to, to this service. So you get an existing shine to be exchanger and use in this process. So to verify now if the heat shine to be heat exchanger is worth or, or not to this service, we need to perform the rigorous mode calculation. To do that, we just need to return to heat exchanger and now, instead of choosing the simple weighted, I will choose the rigorous shelling tube. You will only be able to perform calculations on rigorous shelling tube if you have the drawing of your equipment, because you will be asked for to have the pipe length, pipe diameter, shell length, shell diameter. In this case, we we'll use the standards information done by the, the Aspen High C. So we will not define what is the length or the tube diameter. We will get those information as the standard information available on Aspen High C. So when we shift from modes, the first thing that you must observe is that now we have a warning here telling us that the temperature are over specified. And we have this information because once I have the geometry of the equipment and I have my inlet, my inlet feed, the cold feed and hot feed fully specified, the results of temperature and pressure downstream of the equipment or outlet of the equipment is a function of the geometry. So because of that, I cannot let the information of temperature in the heating out. So the first thing that I will do is to delete that. Now that I delete this information, I can go to the rigorous shelling tube. And the first thing that I will do is go to Exchanger. And I will load the transfer geometry from Aspen, a high seas. Because as I told you, 
I need to have information from the tube length, the tube OD, the tube thickness, and etc. So in order to let my life easier, in this example, I will load all these all those information from the Aspen High Seas. When I do that, you can verify that my Aspen High Seas are red converted because now I have all the information available for the rigorous shell in tube. But this new or this existing shell in tube exchanger, this is not a A E L. This is a B B E M each exchanger. And I will verify this information in the specification data sheet of the equipment. If I go to the setting plan, I can verify how it how looks like my shell and tube heat exchanger. And you can verify here that I have I have here horizontal baffles because they do not uh, reach the top side and the bottom side. So this is horizontal uh, horizontal baffle. And I can verify that also clicking on tube layout. So here I have my, my cuts related to this shell tube heat exchanger. And what I was talking by the operations or maintenance supervisor is that this new shell tube heat exchanger, it has a vertical baffles. It is a double segmental and also uh, vertical baffles. And I am not able to set those informations here in this screen. To do that, I need to go to EDR browser. That is a relationship or a connection between the Aspen EDR and the Aspen High Seas. Just before doing that, let's verify the performance of this heat exchanger. So verify that if I consider that my with all these calculations, the dirty of my shine to be heat exchanger increase it. And now I will do the, the modifications to verify how much will be the dirt of the shine to be heat exchanger. The, if I go to worksheet, now the temperature of my heating out is 96.4 Celsius degree because as I have more duty associated with this heat exchanging, my outlet conditions will be lower. So, Let's go to Rigorous Shell, Shell in Tube, click on EDR Browser. It will open another tab for you, and now I can do the adjustment. The first adjustment is that according to operations or according to the Shell in Tube Heat Exchanger drawing, my tube pattern is not 30, it's 45 degrees. So I have also that the buffer type is not single single segmental it's double segmental and you can see the representation what happens when you select this type and my buffer cut is not horizontal it is vertical you will verify if you return it to the heat exchanger is that the Aspen high seas already performed all the calculations and if i go to performance my dirty now change it from 7 point something to 5.4. But I didn't finish my settings yet. I will return to the exchange details and I will go to the process because I need to add the information for the falling resistance. So for my hot side, I have 0 0.0001. And for my cold side, I have 0.0002 and it will depend on the fluid that you are working with. So now if I return to my heat exchanger and verify the performance, you can see that because of the res resistance of the fluid, now my dirty decreased a little bit and it is higher than the simplified calculations. If you get this far, now it's time to hit the share button and choose a friend or a chemical process engineering community to share this video. Because this way, you will help me to grow and strengthen the chemical process engineering and plant design community around the world. And if you want to know more about how are the equipments that can be integrated with the EDR, 
from Aspen, I recommend you to take a look in this video that will appear in the screen right now. So guys, this is it. I hope you like it and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.